This segment of the CU podcast is brought to you by Into the AM. They have premium, high quality apparel, including nice graphic tees, basic tees, hoodies, and even boxer briefs. I'm wearing the Grand Terrain tee. If you want a little bit of the outdoors action right there, got the mountains, got the moon right there. You got the happy hour tee. Yeah, with the tiki mug, I think this is really fitting for me. Into the AM has different collections and themes, so whatever you're into, you'll find something that fits your style. They've got space themes, animal, skull, festival style themes. The shirts are ultra soft, they're pre-shrunk, tailor-fitted, and they use eco-friendly inks. And these really are like nice and soft, very comfortable. I like this one. This is the Lost Signal tee. This is from the uh, festival collection right here. And then this is the Overseer tee. This is also one of my favorites. It's like a little alien outdoors thing right there, a little, little alien. Coming. I really like the line work on that. Yeah, it's trying, trying to abduct you from your tent right there in the outdoors. Damn aliens get after you all the time. All right. Uh, the shirts, like I said, are really soft. They're very comfortable. And Into the AM is running a bundle deal. It's three graphic tees for only $60. So you can click the link in the description on YouTube, or if you're a podcast audio listener, use code CONTRI, C-O-N-T-R-I, and you'll get 10% off these very comfortable shirts and gear. I even have stuff like the jungle shorts, the kitty cats on my legs right here. <laughs> Go look good and feel good with Into the AM. All right, Ian. Yes. Um, this was alerted on, on Twitter, uh, this story. Um, that a, a super NES dev kit was coming up for auction. Ah, uh, yes. So, yeah, the announcement was, you know, that there was that dev kit coming out, and that led to links of a bunch of other video game-related uh, memorabilia and stuff being sold uh, in L.A. Uh, there was the Super NES dev kit. There's lots of Pong clones. There's Famicom systems. Um and, you know, it, that initially captured the public's attention because the Super NES dev kits, you don't see them very much. And also, I think it's because uh, the starting bid for it is a fairly astronomical uh, $20,000. Um, and from what we've heard, uh, it's not probably not worth $20,000. It's hard. To, it's hard to price out dev kits, but... Right. From my knowledge and historical thinking about it, they who, is, who is our man? Uh, who is our man behind the scenes who told us that like without the software and stuff like Kev that? Trist. Oh uh, yeah, I, yeah uh, I know. I was just yeah. Kev Trist is not sure that this is a, you know that this is totally usable at this point in time. You need to use it on an old computer. You need the dev software uh, to use this as well. Right. So it's probably so, not built into this. I don't like, it would I, be separate software. I maybe I don't. Know. We don't know. I don't know. But this was obviously you know given out to developers to make Super Nintendo games. It says Super NES emulator SC. Um, so so in my in the past, um, you see these come up, I think, uh, like Dreamcast ones, PlayStation ones. They would go for probably four figures, but lower four figures. They go for probably low thousands, something like that, uh, just from my perspective sure. uh, on these. Because there's not a huge amount you can do with these um by and large i think people would probably get some of them because there might be some maybe game builds on them to dump in the past potentially i mean other than yeah. that it's just um, an interesting piece of history yeah. but what it, it's, a, it's a display piece i think it's humorous that to me it looks like an xbox series x yeah it's a cube it's, yeah it's like a giant it's a it's, it's a it's a t it's a tower it's like a computer tower so this is being auctioned off from Van Eaton Galleries, which is a weird auction house. They're in Southern California. Uh, they, they do like celebrity stuff. They do animation art on the website. Like I, this is not something you would expect to see something like this come up. So why, so why is this being auctioned and you know, what's going on here? Well, some people surmise based upon uh, the listing, this is the listing. This particular unit was used to create the audio for game fr franchises such as Earthworm Jim, Madden Football, Cool Spot, Jungle Book, Chuck Rock, and Jim Lee's Wildcats. So people surmised, wow, what does what what the, the audio have in common for those games? That's Tommy Tallarico. This, this is Tommy Tallarico's Super NES dev kit. It's his. Um, he's the one auctioning it off uh, here. And this was confirmed that he, he showed this exact unit in his My Retro Video Game Collection video 
from November of 2020 and has the same exact markings. Not that there's a lot of these around to begin with, probably anyway, because they're supposed to go back to Nintendo. Uh, these uh, these dev kits, which is a whole other different conversation. I'm not going to get into the legality of owning. Some I don't of give a shit about the legality. Care. I mean, honestly, uh, we I don't, don't like Tommy, but, but if someone else owned it, we'd think it was cool. So yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't no, really think, care. No, we think it was cool. It's fine. Absolutely. But this is but this is Tommy Tallarico's, the former CEO uh, uh, of Intel Vision Entertainment, the current president still, and it has the same exact markings on it uh, here. Uh, he's talking about it in his video here. It's, it's his. And the fact that it's Southern California. Uh, but it's weird to go through something like Van Eaton Galleries because I don't know if that's the audience for something like this. Like the typical person that's going on to buy, uh, you know, some sort of art, fine art they have. They have animation art. Uh, it seems like this is not in their wheelhouse for something like this. They have, I'm looking at some of their auctions, Ian. They have stuff like, in the past, they have a Hanna-Barbera auction. They have a Mad Monster Party movie art show tribute. They have a Disneyland auction. Uh, they have a pet portrait day for the Beagle Freedom Project going back in time. Uh, <laughs> that's from Disneyland, the Richard Kraft collection. Uh, they have all this Disney and, and like art stuff. This They don't have video game stuff. So it's a weird venue to auction it off in general. Because it has to get to send it out to people. This isn't like people on eBay having save searches and go, oh, dev kit. And it comes up, I'm emailed. This is something you'd have to be looking at this yeah. at this uh, auction house. And this is not stuff they typically do uh, here. Um, there's other stuff being auctioned off that people have surmised is... Do you want to talk about the, we talked about the price a little bit, right? $20,000. Oh, yeah, we did. We, we talked about that. It's insane. That's what, makes, what I was going to bring up What's next, more? But... What's more insane is this. Is that there's a 21% buyer's premium on top of all this stuff. 21%, which means that if you're going to go for this, uh, you, you're looking at $24,000 on this, starting. Starting on it, which is nuts uh, for that. And I'm not saying someone's not going to bid on this. I have no idea what the dev kit com uh, collecting community is. But that's that starting bid is going to throw off a lot of interest from the start. That's just my opinion. Sure. Versus starting at like 3000 4000 5000 and seeing what happens. Sorry, what were you saying? Nothing. I was just saying that in addition to that stuff, there was also there's like uh, for instance, just speaking of pricing and the and the high prices, there's a uh, collection of Od uh, not Odyssey, like uh, fifteen rare game consoles in one cassette. Uh, basically, these are all um, Pong clones. Uh, some of these are ones that I've never seen, but the starting price of five thousand dollars or two thousand five hundred dollars is pretty insane it's nuts it, okay. uh, pong clones don't generally and, and and even the weird ones uh at least in my time at luna and if something changed someone can correct me these don't go for anything they don't they don't sell at conventions um i i, I don't think i've there i'm not saying they're not out there because i used to compile some of these and i still have a lot i don't think in my days i've ever met someone that that was like a huge pong clone collector that like hey i'm into buying all of these they might exist i just never Never met them. Um, so the, so with the buyer's premium, that would be, you're looking at, what a Pat Math, you're looking at 20%, that's $3,000, starting $3,000 about. Um, if you look up, what, what like what's the way recognized? There's Super Pong on here. That's one of the more famous ones, because that's Atari, Super Pong um, console. What would that even go for? And, and these don't have the boxes. Uh, okay, they, they, they can't move at $50 or best offer for a Super Super Pong. That's a there is a user. boxed color game. Uh, was color game the Nintendo one? No, this is English. Never mind. That's a generic one. Okay, yeah. Um, let's see. Pong color game. That's the box. What's the cassette? What was the cassette? I'm not sure what the cassette is. All right. So the, the 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 color game. Someone's trying to get 175. Trying to, trying to get 175. Um, I can't find any completed auctions for that color game. So here's the point. If I had to ballpark this, Ian. Uh huh. Uh, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty. There's about fifteen consoles here, including the Bentley CompuVision. Um, this would have to be you have to justify two hundred dollars each to get the three thousand starting bid on that. I don't see, see that as a thing. No, I'd say a hundred dollars each is is even uh, in 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 exorbitant price for something like that. Uh, a, a Bentley CompuVision. Uh, they have cute little boxes. Uh, 35 bucks in the box. Okay, I thought that was going to hit 100. Those are those are worthless. Those are worthless. So I think the average price of all this stuff would be $50 each. I think the average, this, this, is like, this is like $600 worth of stuff, in my opinion. So that begs the question, 
why is the price why is the starting price so high? Why is the starting bid so high? And who sets it? Did did Van Eaton Galleries, who deals in fine art and animation, set it? Or did Tommy Tallarico set the prices of these auctions to these in, insane amounts? I will be shocked if this gets a bid on it. I'll be shocked. Sure. Absolutely shocked. Because I, just looking at a couple of these, I think I own I own that TV game. I, I, own, I own that Telesports game one in the box, for example. Telesports, Pong, in the box. I'll be shocked if it's $50. I uh, can't find one for sale. Uh, I'm sorry, Ian. Uh, Twenty-four dollars a best offer in the box. Yeah, these I was looking are, up a Soundic one. Yeah, these I, I'm not. Are, I'm, I am not finding anything that goes higher than because I, I I'm always I I always think there's got to be one one Pong console out there that's worth something. But, but I never, why would it be though? Because there's a thousand of them. That's the thing. Like, why would they sure. be? That's the argument. How about that Granada one? Granada one. Uh, Granada Pong. I can't find it. I uh, cannot find one there. Um, I found a Granada Williams pinball kit from 72. So that's an insane amount. So I, I guess, um, you know, Tommy needs cash, and that's why this stuff's coming up uh, for sale. The I don't think there's going to be a bid on. Uh, neither will the um, the Nintendo. Uh, there's, uh, there's a Game & Watch Super Mario Brothers VGA 95 mint uncirculated for $200. I mean, those don't go, go for $200, and it just has grading on it. That's just a weird thing. I'm going to guess that's Tommy's as well because the rest are here. Uh, then there's the Famicom console accessories and game collection lot, lot 480. With a minimum bid of $5,000. You would know more about this than I would. Which would be Pat Math, 20%, $6,000, excuse me, 21%. They had to put an extra 1% on, which bothers me. Because I think 20%. Like the, that is, is really, really annoying. That is really uh, chapping your ass. Because in, cause in theory, because I, I think 20% is way too high, high for auction houses to take. I think that's unreasonable in a lot of these cases. I think there should be a cap on some of these. Or at least a minimum, and then it caps. But that's nuts. So for $6,000, Ian... You get the following. Uh, you get a you get two twin Famicoms, which are the dual. There was the ones that came out after both were out. It's it's like the Turbo Duo. They're so this. cool looking. You, you get I the, love them. You get the cartridges and you get the Famicom disc as well. Two of those. You get a boxed family basic keyboard. You get a boxed data recorder. You get a boxed Famicom. You get a boxed disc system. You get the boxed uh, Rob. Which comes with the jar of my stuff, and you get, you get the box stack up thing. I looked up some of these. I'll look up a couple more here. Um, something like that. The keyboard goes for. You can get the keyboard for under one hundred and fifty dollars with the box. Oh fuck it! I'm gonna t I'm gonna I'm gonna freaking list these. I'm gonna do it on my phone. If you want to price out some of these and help me, maybe that's the way to go on this. We're gonna price them out. We're gonna price them out. I'll put one fifty for the keyboard uh, there. Um, I priced out the I priced out the the ro Famicom uh, robot shit was about a hundred. We'll put hundred and twenty. About um, the stack up thing, I believe, was about a hundred. Uh, I'll be generous on some of these. Do you want to look up the data recorder for me? The Famicom data recorder. Yeah, because that one I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, and I'll look up the Famicom console. It would probably be a hundred and fifty for the Famicom. Oh no, it's nothing. It's about. Uh, I'll, I'll be generous on that. Uh, I'll, I'll put I'll put 200 for both of them combined for the for the console and for the disc. box complete. Someone's asking I'll... for 310 on the data recorder. There's a okay. loose one. People are asking 174. Uh, is Another that, that, one for 206 in the box. 200. No, that's loose. I'll put 300. I'll be generous. So we're at, we're up to 920. And what's left? I did I did both I did both the disc system and the regular one. What do we got left there, Ian? What do we got left that I haven't uh, accounted for? No, I think that's it. Um, that's about it. And then the games F1 race, uh, Su Subasa, and baseball. I'll guess those are fifty dollars total, unless you look up. Uh, I'll look up the Subasa. Uh, the yeah the the Tecmo soccer game, uh, Arabic version. I'm struggling to get to one thousand dollars. Is my point? Sure. I am struggling, and I was generous on a couple of these. I'll if you want to say I'm crazy, Pat. The data recorder. I'll put it on another two hundred dollars. I'll say this is twelve hundred dollars worth of stuff. I'll say it's twelve dollars worth of stuff, because the twin Famicoms. Yeah, I forgot the twin Famicoms. The twin Famicoms. Oh, I did put those. The twin Famicoms are about one hundred twenty bucks each. This is like, uh, I'll say thirteen hundred dollars worth of stuff. And they and 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 either the auction house or Tommy recommended they ask 
$5,000 for this stuff. That is nuts. That's nuts. This is, I'm not, I'm not trying to make a big deal of this, but this is, this is someone that has no, either no, re, no awareness of the value of this stuff or really is hoping that some, some moron that is into fine art sees this auction and is like, well, this must be worth at least 5,000 because it's listed. I'm going to hit the, the, the bid on it. Like it makes no sense for this stuff to be priced out like four times what it's actually is worth as a starting bid. It makes no sense. What, uh, what's that? So that Arabic version Subasa, I, I don't, I think that's a, uh, that's, I think that's a, a, Bootleg? a, I think that's a ROM patch. Yeah. That's a ROM patch cart being sold physically. Oh, you're right. Look at the cheap, yeah, cheap it yellow. Look, it doesn't look anything that's like a bootleg. A yeah. It's a bootleg. There's a bootleg here, it's trans, Tommy. It's a translated bootleg. Oh, come on. Yeah, because there's no information or anything on it. That's clearly a bootleg. It's a it's a cheap the cheap yellow ones you see yeah. for sale sometimes. And then F1 race. That that's actually kind of an interesting one to look at. F1 race uh, Famicom disc. Um I'm at thirteen hundred dollars. I'm at thirteen hundred dollars on this stuff. The F1 race is twenty bucks, thirty bucks maybe. No, twelve dollars. It's cheap. These are okay. This is this is twelve. So, do you have any thoughts about why it'll be so wildly overpriced to start? Like, I just don't understand it. Well, I I, I uh, think it just I, I think there is possible. It's possible that there is something with the uh, auction house. Uh, I think people tend to look at sets of video games and the people who this might be sold to because this is not a website that is known for video game auctions. I think they might get people that look at some, a, a nice boxed collection of something and just assume that it's worth the asking price. You can get away with a lot of that. There's a couple more here. There's a couple more. Uh, there's an Atari lot, Ian, lot um, four, eight, 479 mm -hmm. is on there. Uh, and there's also an Odyssey set. The Odyssey set I'll talk about is interesting. This one, this one, I don't have to, I don't need to go on eBay to price this one, Ian. I don't know if you see it. 479 if you want to search for Atari and it'll come up. This is an Atari 7800 in the box. An Atari 2600 for Switch. Search? And uh, an Atari 2600 uh, Junior, the silver small one. An Atari XE, four Atari computer games, an Atari 7800 loose, excuse me, Atari, three Atari 7800 games, and then you have, um, it looks like, uh, is that a 5200 there? So, yes. Ian. No. So, what do you think that should be worth? Without, like, what do you think that would be worth? If you were at Luna selling an Atari XE, an Atari 2600, seven Atari games, um, and an Atari 2600 uh, Junior, like, what would that go for? I, I mean, I would tell them that, honestly, they would probably be better off putting it on eBay or Craigslist without the ability to really accurately test all of these systems. I wouldn't be willing to pay a whole lot of money for them to begin with. Plus, it would take forever for them to sell. I would probably, and if they, like, forced me to offer them some money, I, I mean... You'd offer them, like, 250 and sell it for 500 maybe? I, I don't, I don't, I, I, I'm just being honest. I probably wouldn't want it bad enough to offer more than one. What would you retail I, 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 would, I wouldn't want it. And I would retail it for probably 60 each on the Atari, the 2600, and the the juniors would probably be close to 100. The 7800 would probably be 50 to 60. And the the, box? Okay. the uh, Atari is that an XE? Yeah, on the right. Uh, with the gun and everything, one hundred fifty maybe, uh, maybe one hundred fifty. So this is five hundred dollars worth of stuff. Sure, yeah. Uh, the starting base twenty five hundred dollars on this stuff. Twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred. There, there's nothing special about it. Oh, oh, there's, there's a Jack Pacific two thousand two plug and play on top. Besides the seven eight hundred. In the box, which I mean, that's interesting. In the box, I, oh, guess. I mean, yeah, uh, in the box, it would be more than fifty, but a seven yeah, hundred is 125. not much. No, yeah, no, um, that's nuts. The, the only interesting one to me is uh, is the Odyssey one four seventy eight, because I think there's something signed by Ralph Bear on, on here. You have an original Manda Box Odyssey uh, in the box. You have the Odyssey uh, uh, Pong clones. They came out before the Pong, but you have the two hundred in the box, the two thousand. I think I own both of those. You have the 500, you have um, an Odyssey 2 loose, 
You have the shooting gallery in the box, and you have that red Red Odyssey uh, po- uh, clone or Red Odyssey unit. What has the, the three on each side? You ever see this one? Mm. You see this one before, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I might own it. I might own it. Um, so this one is interesting because it's all earlier ish, like early to mid seventies Odyssey stuff. Besides Odyssey two was was that was what that was like what eighty or is it seventy nine eighty? Um, is there anything signed here by Ralph Bear? The Odyssey two is signed by Ralph Bear. Okay, even though I don't know why he would sign the Odyssey two when he wasn't working on it. I don't think he worked on that one that much. I have no idea. But anyway, so this is interesting stuff just because a boxed Odyssey is not something you see every day, but this stuff still can be found. Uh, Odyssey 1972 box. I'm actually interested to know what these actually go for because I've been so out of it. Okay, they are 600 or best offer on those so we'll just say that's worth five hundred dollars and the uh the shooting gallery probably goes for two hundred dollars but i'm not positive uh okay, someone's trying to get fourteen hundred dollars for a shooting gallery that's not happening no one cares oh that includes the, that includes a box one i'll say the shooting gallery is worth 250 dollars um and then the and then the, the odyssey 2 is worth uh with ralph your signature i don't know that's what up to you i'll say three four hundred dollars and then the clones are worth garbage this ian is a, a maybe i would say a thousand dollars worth of stuff but the starting bid is twenty five hundred dollars on it but this is the only one that's interesting because it has a ralph bear signature that's that's the only thing interesting but it's not on the original odyssey which is weird that's the only thing so maybe they ran, maybe maybe tommy ran into ralph at a convention or met him once said hey i have an odyssey two for you to sign and do that you would want him to sign the original odyssey that's what i want him uh, to sign so that's in poor but displayable condition, the sign Odyssey, according to this. Um, so so you have you have about five auctions with pie in the sky unrealistic prices on these. I mean, I'm flabbergasted. I thought that one of these would come at least to 50% of the value underneath and be like, okay, but not like 20% of the values on some of these. Um, and then also, um, it was kind of shocking to see for sale since Tommy is a huge Spider-Man fan. Uh, two things in particular, you have the um, Spider-Man comic book collection. He used to brag it was the biggest Spider-Man collection, I think, because it was like um, multiple, uh, what is it, multiple thousands of comics. So you have the run of Spider-Man 1 to 125 on here. You have the Web of Spider-Man uh, run. You have other st- stuff on here. Th- the starting bit is 200000 on that. What's interesting to me to see something like that is that... Um, you you would get a bidder on that if if you had a very detailed list of all these comics and what the conditions were. That's the only way you can get uh, any close to approximation of value on a comic set like this. So like the Amazing Fantasy uh, 15, the first Spider-Man appearance, is a 7.0, which is a great grade, but it's a restored grade. Mm. So, and the same for the first Spider-Man one. Uh, but someone, if, if someone was going to buy these, they'd have to know, are these graded? Which ones are graded and what's the grades? And looking at the, the lot, it doesn't look like most of them are graded. So to me, that could be pie in the sky as well. I mean, I'm going to look up Amazing Fantasy 7.0 uh, just to see what it what it goes for. But what it goes for uh, restored. Because restored are never close to the, the amount of a, a, a non-restored comic. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. That's a problem. Uh, yeah, so a 7.0 uh, unrestored universal grade, someone's trying to get um, 175000 for it. I, I have no idea what a restored would go for, like an, an open auction. So less. A lot, a lot less. I don't know if it's 50% less, 25% yeah, I, less. I don't know. No idea. And then finally, we have the um, Spider-Man life-size statue that was in Tommy's uh, Spider-Man cave for sale there. So you have that there too. So. All right. Well, that's a lot of auctions, a lot of stuff. Uh, I hope I hope Tommy makes some money. Uh, he's obviously needed some in need. It looks like if all this stuff from his collection is going, I guess we'll check back in ten days to see what these end at. And do you think, honestly, gun to your head, any of these uh, video game auctions will, will be bid on and won by an actual person? I, I can't say anything really necessarily about the Super Nintendo dev kit. I don't I don't think so, and I definitely don't think so for the rest of it. 
I would say the dev kit, if there's a, a, a Nintendo collector has been looking for one of these for 10 years and can't find one and say, fuck it, I want to pay 20 grand uh, for just a piece that'll just sit there. You really can't do much with it. Um, not for these other auctions for the Famicom stuff or the Odyssey or the Pong clothes. It's mostly, or the Atari stuff. It's not worth it. It's ridiculous.